Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Sunday the 9th of June 2024. Before we get to today's Mill news, I would like to say thank you. Uh, thank you for the 500 subscribers. We've just uh, gone over the 500 subscribers mark. Thank you very much for everyone who subscribed. Thank you very much to anyone who's watched the videos. Uh, given a like, given a share, commented on the videos. Thank you very much. Um, really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now, moving on to today's Mill News. This is from footballinsider247.com. And it's another one of those ones. We, we had get them all the time. We had them last summer as well. Where there's a player name... And then there's like three or four clubs mentioned. And it's usually the same clubs over and over. Um, being linked with Millwall. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday, Middlesbrough. They're always mentioned at the same time as Millwall. And I think it's just for them to get um, all the different clubs to uh, have a look. And then uh, click on this website. And uh, yeah, just, just to get the clicks. So yeah, here we go. This is an exclusive, by the way, exclusive. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday, Millwall, QPR and Swansea race to sign Humphreys' sources. Okay. So, Sheffield Wednesday, Millwall, QPR and Swansea are among a host of clubs chasing Rotherham defender Cameron Humphreys. Now, uh, sources have told Football Insider. Now, here's the thing. There are two players... With the name Cameron Humphreys playing in uh, English football at the moment, one is a midfielder for Ipswich Town, and this one is the is a central defender for Rotherham United. So there you go. Uh, Humphreys, 25, was one of the most impressive performers for Rotherham last season, despite their relegation from the Championship. The centre back is a graduate of Manchester City's youth system and made two first team appearances for the club before leaving in 2019. Humphreys made the move to Rotherham in 2022 and has caught the eye of uh, watching clubs after making 67 appearances over two seasons. Uh, Humphreys joined Rotherham on a three-year deal from Azul to Wagen in uh, 2022 with just one year left and on his deal going into the summer window. As a result of Rotherham's relegation to League One, they could look to cash in on their prized asset. Last time out, the defender made 27 appearances across all competitions, despite Rotherham's disappointment at finishing rock bottom of the championship. He stood out with his defensive ability, despite the team conceding 89 goals, with championship clubs willing to give him another crack at the second tier. Uh, Wednesday made a miraculous late escape from relegation last season, while QPR and Millwall saw their fortunes turn after changing their managers, with all three looking to push on next season. Uh, Swansea, meanwhile, suffered another disappointing mid-table season, but will look to be ambitious in their backing of Luke Williams. Um, Humphreys is represented by YMU Management, an agency which has strong links in the AFL as, as well as representing Premier League talents such as Evan Ferguson and James Maxey. That's interesting. That's the first time I've ever heard mentioned the agent at the end of a story. So was is that is that the source? Is that what sources is, is that the source is? Um Yeah, most of this stuff does come from, from agents and I think he's just trying to maybe get a bid a bid or two in. Um well, we'll see. So yeah. Let's have a look at the lad. Uh, this is from whoscored.com. Um, there you go. He played 2,029 minutes last season. He had one assist, five yellow cards, passing accuracy of 79.1%, and one averagely 1.4 aerials per match. His uh, average rating was 6.31. Uh, not the best. Not the best. Uh, defensively. Uh, these is 0.8 tackles per game, 1.3 interceptions per game, 0.5 fouls per game. Well, he's always 0.4 offside, so that's offside one, not offsides against. Obviously, if you're a defender, uh, four clearances per game. So that seems to be his 
main thing is clearances. That's quite high, I think, for the league. Uh, dribbles, uh, someone dribbled past you in the game, 0 0.2. So you don't really, players don't really get past him. Blocks per game, 0 0.7. So there you go. What can he do? Obviously, one assist. Uh, not much, not much attacking. He's literally just a defensive defender. Uh, passing wise, averaging 28 passes per game, 79.1% pass accuracy. Um, so he seems to be a defender who's good on the ball. Um, he did play in midfield once, didn't get the best of skills. He strengths the concentration, his weakness is aerial duels and passing. Um, okay. But again, playing for Rotherham United. So we'll see, but uh, now here's the thing. We assume that these things aren't true because of the way they're written and the way they're coming out. They're put on these websites to generate clicks, and it's literally one player and four different clubs, and uh, you you have to assume that they're not true. But if it was true, um, you would see that this player was a central defender, and then you would put two and two together, and you would think, well. The Jafet Tanganga thing's been going on for a while. We've got no news from him. The only news that's coming out about that is seemingly bad news uh, that other clubs are starting to be linked in. Uh, we had a deal with Tottenham and then they released him anyway. So, does this mean we're moving on to our other targets? In cent we do need a central defender. Um, are we moving on from Tanganga? Does the deal look increasingly unlikely to happen and that's why you're getting us being linked with other players who play that position like Alfie Gilchrist and the, the, the fella at Exeter that was one that was going around and now this guy Cameron Humphrey so there you go um, again is it worth but is this guy worth paying for because he's still under contract is he Better than a number of these other central defenders that are available on the free. Not too sure, not too sure. Um, but we'll see. So here you go, Cameron Humphrey's been linked with us. Now, moving on to this. Montenegro played their second friendly of the week, of the international break. Um, and they lost, but Sarkic was not in goal. He played... Uh, in goal for uh, the game against Belgium the other day, played a blinder, even though they lost 2-0, and the first goal was ugly, part of a, a mix-up that he was involved in, but he did play an absolute blinder. Um, he wasn't in the team, and he wasn't on the bench, so um, hopefully he's not injured. See, the first game was in Brussels, which isn't that far from South East England. This game was in uh, Montenegro, I think. Is the capital of Montenegro in Novograd? I don't know. I could find out. Let me just click on this, see. Uh, it's just got a ref's name. Nah, so yeah. He's, he wasn't involved, so hopefully he's not injured. We really don't want that be the case but like I say I think what it is though is that they've got a new coach Prozaneki the Croatian former Croatian national player uh, he's been in charge for four games two two wins and two losses now uh, and he, he's he did make, mix up a few players here move a few around put them in different positions uh, I think he's trying to trying out a few things so we'll see because Sarkic coming into this uh, I wasn't he was nailed on in my eyes, to be like the third choice goalkeeper, uh, and it was quite a shock for him to be starting against Belgium. I did not expect that, and I certainly didn't expect him to play an absolute blinder. But uh, yeah, so we'll see. Hopefully, he's not injured. We really, we well, so if if he is injured, you'll probably see start getting stories coming out tomorrow that we're being linked with certain. Um, certain goalkeepers because uh, if Connell Truman uh, being a number one 
uh, in the championship level is probably not the case um, so definitely might need to sign a goalkeeper if that is the case that Sarkic is injured and we hope that he isn't moving on to this more stuff from the international stuff uh, uh, this is from the independent.ie the Irish independent uh, Idomi Maku hails Ireland's statement victory for Croatia yeah he gave a uh, post-match interview the, the other day after they beat Croatia uh, quite easily at the end although the score was 3-2 they were 3-0 up um, so yeah uh, Ireland under 21 forward Adomi and Maku hailed his side statement of victory over Croatia on Friday night and this is a sign that Jim Crawford's uh, team mean business ahead of their massive Euros qualifying running as they battle it out with group rivals Italy, Turkey and Norway for a spot at Slovakia 2025. The young boys in green kicked off their June friendly double header with an impressive 3-2 win over five-time finalist Croatia as Amaku's second half goal extended the Irish lead to 3-0. Uh, and despite a two-goal fight back from the host, Crawford's men saw out the win of Robrodzic uh, as Mills and Maku reflected on the character-building evening. Oh, it's a Stephen. It's it's a massive Stephen. It's a credit to the lads uh, beating tough opposition like Croatia away from home. It just shows we mean business and we want to qualify and we want to be there next summer. And Maku told the Irish Independent after knitting his fourth under-21 goal on his seventh cap. Not bad. Well, it started last September, it continues now with England on Tuesday and then to the last four qualifiers and we look forward to seeing what we can do and hopefully we'll be there next summer and that's all, what we want, that's that's the goal. And the win just showed the character and the resilience of the lads uh, coming away from home to a country like uh, Croatia, uh, a tough team with good players and, and the lads stuck it out. That's a test for us, uh, a real character building uh, to see how we'd react after conceding twice. Uh, it's important we get into that winning mentality, uh, bring that into the last four qualifiers, and hopefully uh, we can be there in Slovakia in 2025. Yeah, and interesting, so obviously Amaku, I think he's going to be 22 this year. Uh, he, he can still play for them. Uh, I looked at it, I looked it up. You have to be uh, so under 21 by, from when the the, the the qualifying started and if you are then you're allowed to go through and play in all the all the games in the qualifying and then into the tournament and stuff like that so he can still he still quite he can still play even though he's over the age of uh, 21 or will soon be um oh he's 20 friday was the 20 year old's uh, first start under crawford since november's draw Against Italy, after missing the March window through injury, he opened up on how difficult his recent setbacks have been on a personal level, having made just two appearances with the Lions across their final 20 championship outings due to injury. I was good to miss the San Marino trip because you miss the lads, uh, you miss that feeling of going out and representing your country, said the Dubliner. Uh, the club season was up and down, though. we had a couple of managers come and go. Um, personally, I started the season great, and I found myself uh, playing some of my best football. But then New Year, a couple of injuries slowed me down a bit. It happens, uh, it's part of the game, so it's just up to me to reflect on how I can look after myself and do even more to make sure I'm on the pitch for the majority of the season. Throughout your career, you get a lot of people saying to you, don't get too high and don't get too low, and you kind of take it with a pinch of salt at the moment. But as you experience injuries and those setbacks, and you start to actually realise that it's the truth, it's not a cliche. I'm learning not to get too high or too low. Even when I get injured, I saw it in, uh, the good in it in terms of the length of time I was out, and other people have had it worse than I've had. And you have to look at the positivities in every situation, good or bad. There you go, indeed, indeed. Firing on all cylinders at the moment. Scoring goals uh, for the Irish under-21s. Got a game on Tuesday against uh, England under-20s. Um, a May feature uh, against Romain Essay. Uh, who's playing for the England the twenties? So there you go. And on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.